All right, this is Paris, but let's back up a little. I'm starting off today in Bruges. So yeah, this is Bruges. Bruges is cool. I mean, pretty cool. I'm on a solo adventure right now, trying to catch trains to Paris. So to get from here to here, we're gonna have to travel a bit, which can be stressful and chaotic, as the signs are increasingly only in French, one of the 6,499 languages I don't speak. On this train connection, I wasn't sure I had the right ticket, but had to get on anyway. And then I almost missed my stop when I didn't realize Brussels has more than one international train station. But somehow I always end up at the right place. Getting on this bullet train to Paris was such a great moment. It's like a portal into a different dimension. Paris is its own strange and unique world, and arriving there always gives me the same feeling. So, this surreal buildup of excitement was almost unbearable as I floated on the Talus rails, watching the French countryside go by at 186 miles per hour. I'm going to Paris with a question this time. I'm the kind of person who generally enjoys solo travel, but in a city known for romance, the question is, can you have a perfect day in Paris alone? I intend to find out. Arriving at Gare du Nord, the dreamlike quality of this place at sunset was a perfect introduction to the city. The evening light dancing through the window panes filled the air with energy. I was buzzing just stepping out onto the street. The sensory overload was incredible. I'd arrived from Belgium on the evening train, so I had only an hour of light left. And now, we're in Paris. I dropped my baggage and quickly rented a bike from the nearby Velib station, which was as easy as spending 15 minutes trying to figure out a bizarre automated system with no English instructions. It was a perfect night. I was in Paris, a city I dream of often, a place that has captured imaginations for centuries, the number one tourist destination in the world. I walked around just happy and taking it all in before turning in for the night. Okay, so now let's back up even further. Why am I in Paris? For a few reasons. There's something about revisiting Paris that makes me feel incredibly lucky and grateful. So that's one reason I'd go out of my way to be here again. The second is, a year ago I came through Paris on my own and spent the day biking around the city and had one of the best days of my life. So I'm back to recreate that. Dream date. Finding myself in Europe again, I couldn't pass up the chance to spend another day here. to the Velib station, which they are literally everywhere. I grabbed a bike. And now, as always, first order of business, coffee. I used this app, Bean Hunter, to find one of the highest rated coffee shops in the city. And I was excited to use my language skills here to order. I get a cortana Then I walked a few blocks to the Seine to wake up and get my bearings. Now, a couple of important facts I learned about visiting Paris that will help me from overloading my itinerary. You can't go everywhere, and shouldn't try. Paris is huge. Getting around is not easy. So if you've only got a few days, you're going to have to pick only a few places. For me, that was Le Marais to explore somewhere new, then hitting a few more classic Parisian spots, like the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre. Oh, but before we cross the river, let's see a little more of Marais. If you need a second cup of coffee already, hit the Broken Arm, another quality shop in this neighborhood found on Bean Hunter. Next on the agenda, we're hitting a real bonafide Parisian market. 
Marché des Enfants Rouge, if I'm saying that right. It's chock full of food stands and little restaurants and has the feel of someplace authentic. I explored and enjoyed taking in the sights and smells, but found it a bit intimidating with my limited understanding of French. So I took the scene in and moved on, knowing my next stop would include food. Another important Paris fact, it's easy to not eat great food in Paris. So here's my suggested hack. Rather than spend time reading the absurd blend of love-hate reviews on foodie sites of thousands of possible restaurants, if you get good weather like I did, go to a French grocery store, a good one, specifically this one, and stock up for a day of unbelievable snacks. Now, they don't speak much English, but this place is a world of beautifully confusing new foods. And I'm confident that whatever you leave with, you're gonna have a good time. On my shopping list was fromage, charcuterie, baguette, and juice. Your list may vary. The selection is overwhelming, but even if you don't speak French, confusion translates in any language and can lead to multiple samples of Parisian delicacies. Thank you. They were exceedingly friendly and helped despite the obvious barrier. And I tried a few fantastically intense meats before selecting a simple socket, shocket, something. I then checked out and felt like I got quite the bargain. 25, 27 euros. Whether it was or not, I don't know, but 27 euros? That's multiple meals for the price of one by my math. And with the ease of these bike rentals, you can move your feast to a few of the thousands of amazing spots around the city to set up shop. There is an abundance of lovely spots to check out along the river, but for my purposes, Pont Marie on down to Pont des Arts were found to be ideal. A perfect spot for my first picnic and to watch the locals take in this gorgeous weather. Chapter two, part two. Chapter two, part two. You know what, that's stupid. Chapter three. Time to hit the classic Parisian sites. First up, Notre Dame. If you love tourists as much as I do, this is the place for you. But really though, you can't come to Paris and not see Paris. So one of the things I opted for this time was to visit the Louvre on a Tuesday, when it's closed. Why, you ask? Well, to see the architecture without the normal throngs of tourists. Which was, while beautiful, not necessarily the highlight of my trip. However, I can't say I regret it. Catching this street performance echoing through the chambers of the Louvre made the stop worth it alone. back to the bikes. I hopped on another velop and made my way toward Paris' most defining symbol. How could I not? It's a marvel, even 130 years after its opening. So think what you may about my itinerary, I felt I was catching the best of Paris. Which, let's go back and map out exactly where we've been. We started off in Marais, hit two coffee shops, went to the market, shopped at Maison Plasson, Explored the River Park, Notre Dame, the Louvre, swung by the Montparnasse Tower to get these aerial shots, 
and now we're here. Chapter 1, Part 4 The unbelievably overcrowded parks around the Eiffel Tower may not be what they used to be back in the 1920s or 1840s or whenever Paris was supposedly at its best, but it's still an amazing place to spend golden hour, especially for people watching, and if you happen to catch a show like this. And now, as night was falling, I began the long trek back to the 10th arrondissement. I biked along the river before taking the subway, catching a near-perfect sunset as I went. Getting back to the question I posed earlier, can you have a perfect day in Paris alone? I'd say the answer is clearly yes. First of all, you're never alone, not in Paris. And while it's easy to feel lonely in a crowd of people, I feel that's an issue of mindset. As an avid people watcher, I reveled in the experience of wandering aimlessly and felt there was no shortage of meaningful interactions. Paris is not the friendliest city in the world, but it certainly doesn't live up to its stereotypes. I had an incredible time here, just being in this amazing city, and would not hesitate to come back and visit again, even alone. <laughs>